Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Church Mag, and I have another unprogrammed episode for you guys. If you've never seen the series about unprogrammed, we got five minutes to talk on video about one of our favorite topics, completely unedited. So here we go. I want to talk to you guys about church tech budgets and how to get the money for your projects that you really need to have for your church. Now we're trying to make a ministry that is digital in a digital world, trying to go beyond the four walls of your church. How do you do that well? And I don't think that the topic is necessarily, at least for this conversation, about how to do budgets. I have a business background. I have an academic approach to this. I love Excel. I love accounting and budgeting and balancing and all that stuff. But really, that's more of a Dave Ramsey aspect of how are you being a good steward of your money? How are you trying to promote, trying to be able to be a good financial business for your ministry? I want to go beyond that and how you can get the budget for your church with your elders, with your deacons, with the staff. But that's going to take something that means to be religious and, re and relational in that process. For me, the discussion about wanting to get that next Windows PC, about wanting to get that next Apple product for your church, for your ministry, starts long before you get to that point that you say, okay, I want to be able to do something amazing. It starts with those conversations about what is it that our church can do digitally? Really, you guys are the advocates for your church about the soundboard, the projectors, about trying to get the next technology, about getting an Apple TV, whatever that thing is that you want, you probably need to have an understanding about how it's going to be used and what that could be for your process. And that means trying to start to dream about what you could dream. And I would highly encourage if you are a church tech leader for your church, whether volunteer or paid staff, dream and dream big. And I, when I say dream and dream big, I don't mean you sit in an office somewhere and dream about it. I mean, get your entire team together and have a session where you are just sitting there thinking, what is it that could be? I love the idea of not only just starting in that process, but every month, every quarter, your team is meeting and you're doing a lot of different things. You're doing trainings in those meetings. You're doing devotionals in those meetings. When I was team leader, that's what I did is I had those three expectations, training, vision and just simply trying to come together as christians with our specific ministry i think though that in that process you're trying to figure out what it is that you want to be able to do now i'm making an assumption here i'm assuming that first of all you understand what the vision of the entire church is and when i say that i mean that a lot of different churches have a different expectation for our church that i'm currently a part of we want to be able to reach our community and not necessarily the middle or upper class. We, we want to reach the li lower, maybe middle class approach. We love to reach college students. We love to reach homeless people. We love to reach the shut-in. We have a huge foster care approach. And so that actually influences how we do ministry. And so what is the vision of your church and how are you trying to tackle your community in a unique way for the kingdom? Obviously, probably working along with all the other churches in your community. And so for technology, you have a specific aspect that you need to play in that process. And yes, your pastor may be somewhat tech savvy in that process of understanding how to work an iPhone, uh, understanding how to install apps on his Android device, maybe even getting Word running or syncing to the cloud. But it's so much more than that, isn't it? You need to understand how the soundboard connects to projector, connects to the uh, to the computer, connects to the lava mic. All those different things absolutely must be understood by you in that process. And if you don't have the tools or the budget to be able to work something like that, you're not going to succeed. So you need to start the conversation now, and you need to probably educate the leadership in this process. And I don't mean just a single conversation that's for an hour one time and okay, they have buy-in. I mean simply dreaming with the pastor after you've had those sessions with your team. And that comes across in the simple conversations in the hallways of, hey, did you guys see that new Apple TV that just came out? Could you imagine what we could do with something like that? And you've already had those dream sessions, so you already have that elevator pitch. And so you get 10 seconds in the hallway before the pastor goes up to give the sermon or talk to people and shake hands as people are leaving, or maybe he's getting ready to do a hospital visit, whatever that is. You only have a couple of seconds, but you already know what you're going to say in that process. And then you go for lunch with an elder or with some other congregation members. And if your team is on board, they are doing the same thing. Not necessarily to only have a conversation about that, but man, how great would that be to have that in that process? For me, one of the biggest things about the budget is it's probably being used up. It's already being used for something. 
And with technology, we have high priced expenses in this process. And so you need to make sure that not only is there a win in this process for the pastor and he understands the vision, but I would even encourage you to go to the youth pastor, to the worship pastor and say, hey, what happens if one of our amps breaks? What's going to be the background? And let them figure it out for themselves. One of the great things about trying to have some kind of solution for a budget isn't that you are necessarily proposing the idea, but you are proposing a problem that they have not thought about. And once they think about it, maybe they are so smart and educated they know how to solve that. And oh my goodness, I didn't think about that limitation, that barrier that we may have if we didn't have you thinking about it. But most times it's actually a I don't know, what do we do if something like that happens? And you get to be the superhero in that process and reward them by saying, well, if we had an extra amp, I know that it's gonna cost a lot of money and it's gonna just sit here in the corner, but we have seven different amps that we're using in our worship service, or we have speakers or an extra light bulb for the projector, or maybe even a backup projector. We can ensure that everything will go smoothly in this process. One of the big ones that I had a conversation with someone recently was the internet speed. You have the Wi-Fi for the entire congregation to use on Sunday, but they weren't able to get the information for their own system to be able to use. And it was a crisis situation. For me, you want to have these conversations before you get to a crisis situation. You want to have these conversations before the next Apple event. And so I encourage you, instead of having a last minute, let's see if we can get the pastor on board so he can bump up our budget that doesn't work. Instead, have that conversation five months, 10 months in advance. You might not even know what the product is, but you want the budget to be able to do something if it comes along. And if it doesn't come along, then that's fine. But I would highly encourage you guys dream big and start having conversations with your leadership because you never know when you'll get to that point where you need to have a budget line item and recognizing that you need to work with other ministries in this process because everything is tight. So I highly encourage you guys, think about what that budget process is. What are some of the questions that you have about that process? I'd love to answer them, so leave a comment down below. We'll talk to you guys next time.